J, Chai Suksuri, Product Specialist, ISS. Today I want to show you how to program Tools Talk 2. So let's go take a look. How to program a two step. So start from your tiny program, click Add on the right hand corner, and by default, two step is the first strategy here. I could name it whatever. In this example, I'm just going to name it two step. And I'm going to create a target torque of 10 Newton meters. OK, let's see what we have in the properties here. My strategy is two step. I could change if I want to. But in this example, we're going to show how to create a two step program. Direction could be clockwise, counterclockwise, depends on your joint. Reheat detection, I also covered this in other videos. Early means it will flag a not OK when it detects a reheat when you start the cycle. Or complete means it will flag a not OK if it finds a reheat until the end of the cycle. So you do the full rundown, then it says this is not OK if it finds a reheat. So that's the difference. But by default, we want to detect it early so we don't waste our time. True angle compensation, this is something else we're not going to cover in this video. Attachment tuning enable, we will not cover in this video as well. It's if you attach some extra gear heads, like a crow foot. Now, this is interesting. Validate against tool values. If you turn it on, all the values here will be validated against your connected tool, which it could be a wireless tool. In this case, this is a cable tool. Every two-stage tining has four steps to it. First is a start stage when you're looking for a socket. Two is a rundown when you are going through the treads until the snack point. And from the snack point, you started gaining clamping force until you arrive at your target torque and a stop stage, which mostly it's just one configuration, but we'll talk about it later. So on my start stage, this is by default. Um, you want to turn 90 degrees at 35 RPM to look for the socket. And if you have a higher torque, you might want to change this torque max value. So because there could be a drag from the gears. Now on your down stage, you can set self tapping. If you have a self tapping screw, such as a plastic application, Run down speed by default, it's going to be max, but I select manual and tone it down a little bit to 500 RPM, which is about 75% of the tool. We would recommend a lower speed because sometimes in a real world application, you're on a medium joint or a harder joint and um, running full speed could just overshoot the target. So I would say it depends on the joint. You could also set rundown torque limits or rundown angle limits. An application for rundown angle limits is you might have different lengths of thread and you want to detect that, for example. If you can see from torque, it could start from a small amount of torque or you know the ending of your start stage. And imagine if you have this kind of angle limit, it means it's going to make sure that you your operator is using a long bolt every time. But we're not going to set this up in this video as well. Post view torque is something else. It's more of an advanced strategy when you want to detect the consistency in a tiny. Run down complete torque. By default, it's five, but I set this up to four right here. First torque is five, so it's after my run down complete. What is my first speed? My first speed is set to auto. If I set this to manual, this means we're going to run 500 RPM to 4 Newton meters. Then from 4 to 5 Newton meters, we're going to run at 250. If I hit manual here again, it means from 5 to 10, we're going to run at 82 RPM, which this default number is really good because from 5 to 10, we're already in the snug and we're building up torque. So we don't make sure it's slow. When it reaches the target, it'll be more accurate. But we could leave that to auto as well. 
because we can see the parameters are already good. And this is my target torque, 10 Newton meters. I would want to set some torque limits according to my specifications. Suppose um, my specifications are from 9 to 11 Newton meters. And I could also set my angle limits. This depends on your joint as well. So we want to leave it open for now so we can collect the data and we can tune it down later to make sure we're having a better quality tightening, but that depends on the data. Measure target torque at max torque value, which is the peak, which is good. Measure angle to max angle value, which is also good. You could also turn on torque compensation if you have um, a PBT application, or you can turn on current monitoring as well if needed. I would always suggest having a soft stop so it's a more ergonomic um, program. That's pretty much it, setting up a two-step tightening. So that's it on this video for Tools Talk 2. I hope that was helpful. If you have any more questions, please contact your local LS Copco representative. Thanks for watching.